Hi guys, um, today I'll be doing a wing pour, which is a pretty neat technique. I've only done it once and I wanted to try it again on a bigger canvas. Um, this is a, I believe it's a 16 by 24 inch canvas. Um, these are my colors that I'll be using. This is a new paint I got, one decor paint. It's pretty color. Light, uh, bright aqua green, I believe that is. Payne's gray. That's also my base coat. And this is my satin enamel mix. I usually just put a couple scoops of satin enamel in with my white, titanium white mix um, with American flow draw. And so I'm just popping the air bubbles with the torch and then I will be filling my cup. usually try to use a color that I'm using in the painting as my base coat for this just in case you leave any negative space it'll still match the painting but you can also use you know a color that isn't part of the colors in your cup my consistency is pretty thick for this it's about three to four second trace leaves a mound on a mound. I wanted it pretty thick so that um, the lines kind of stayed, you know, in shape and your composition was easier to, you know, work on the canvas or to keep the composition that you pour. I'm just deciding what color to have as the center, so I decided on the bright aqua green, and then just to kind of darken the edges of it, I wanted to put the Atlantic blue, so like, I like to use a really bright color or a really dark color as the center, so it kind of stands out, um, and then if you put the, as the next color, a color that's similar to it, but darker or lighter, it'll just kind of it gives a really neat effect. And then adding the Payne's Gray even darkened it a little more, so it goes from like lighter to darker. And then I put a little gold, and when I pour the cup, I basically am trying to do very contrasting colors, so you want to have like light colors and then dark, light and then dark. You don't really want to put a lot of the same like shade of colors one after the other because they'll kind of just blend together. You kind of want to use very contrasting colors so that they stand out more, I guess you would say. And I'm speeding it up a little because now I'm repeating the colors, but still kind of putting them in this similar order, maybe a little bit differently. And I only add a little bit of gold and a little bit of the satin enamel mix because I don't want it to be like too cloudy and have it like take over. Like, same with the gold. You just, I just kind of want like a little bit of gold seen because gold can take over if you put too much in. with the Payne's Gray so that um, when you pour it out it kind of blends with the base coat color. So for this technique you put a cup underneath one end of your canvas so that it's tilted 
and then you pour from that end where it's tilted up so that your paint will flow down as you pour it and it kind of gives this really neat wing-like effect which is why it's called the wing pour but yeah I keep the cup pretty close to the canvas so it gives those neat fingerlings on the sides and then you have that really like bold center if you hold it higher up it'll the colors will all blend more and it won't have as dramatic of an effect For some reason, whenever I pour these, it always goes to one side of my painting. My table must be, or one side of the canvas, must be a little bit tilted. So I'll kind of move the cup back and forth as I get to the end of the cup, just to kind of keep it in that, you know, making those fingerlings the way it was when I was pouring it out from the beginning. And then you take the cup out and then you can tilt and make the composition how you want. So I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of the video. I just wanted to give you an idea of how this technique is done. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Thank you all for joining and have a great day. Bye. So I should have just went off the corner right now. I don't know why I second guessed myself, but I just thought it was gonna mess up the design and left it and decided to tilt the other areas first. And it caused me to really struggle with that corner later. So yeah, I mean, even when I tilt off the other corner opposite it, I should have just went to that corner after, but I didn't, and then I struggled with that corner, and it kind of made me tilt out the painting differently than I would have liked to. So, yeah, don't be afraid to go over your corner first. Like, I was almost there, and watching the video back, it just really frustrated me, because I could have just went over, and the design would have went back into place, so just letting you know that, you know, it can be sometimes hard to make the decision which corner you want to go off first and if it's, you know, the right one, if it's going to mess the painting up. Like when I tilt off this corner, I should have went over to that corner after too and the design would have stayed, the composition would have stayed the same. But, yeah, with these larger canvases, I, like, I'm always afraid to, like, tilt too much towards the corners because I feel like I'm going to lose so much of the design sometimes. 
Um, I'm still getting used to doing larger canvases with these pores, and, you know, it takes some time to get up the nerve to do them, you know, to just, because I always feel like I get, like, wiggly lines in these larger canvases, and my composition doesn't stay the same way that I would, they would on a smaller canvas, but, yeah, you'll see me struggling to try to get that corner covered later, and I feel like the painting kind of got a little bit wonky because of that, so, yeah, I just wanted to let you know why it takes so long for me to finish with the tilting. So I'm back. I just wanted to talk a little bit about how the center, how I did on the first few colors in the cup and how it gave that like um, light to dark effect in the center of the painting. Um, I'll go back to it here in a sec. Like these, this, these are all the other layers, which I love, but you don't notice them as much as the center part which is right here and it goes from that light bright aqua green color to the um I forget what the color was called but the darker green to the Payne's gray and how it just kind of like looks like it you know blends together I just love that effect and uh, always try to get that when I do some type of pour like this. But yeah, I, I feel like if I wouldn't have had to struggle with that one corner, it would have been more, the composition would have been a little bit better, but 
you know, sometimes it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave a comment. And I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.